Hi, this is Brian with ActiveMelody.com. In this week's guitar lesson, we're going to take a look at a slow melodic blues that's played in the key of A. This is a 1-4-5 chord progression, and those chords are all minor chords. And what you're really going to be learning is you're going to be learning how to go back and forth between playing the rhythm part and the lead part. Now, uh, this lesson is the result of a video that I did last week. I recently acquired a Gibson Birdland guitar and I was just demoing the guitar going through the different pickups and while I was doing that I was noodling around and I had a lot of people email me and leave comments saying that they'd like to see some kind of uh, expansion on that or turn that into a lesson. So that's what this is. I went back and listened to what I was doing and originally I was going to make this just the guitar on its own but that sounded a little too naked I thought so I added a piano track and then ended up being drums and bass as well but I left the jam track very sparse so, so it's going to be a challenge for you to fill in all of the cracks as a guitar player. So you're going to be going back and forth between rhythm and lead. And it's a lot of fun and a lot of things that you can learn uh, in this lesson. So I've got the lesson split into two parts. In this video, we're going to take a look at part one, the first half. If you'd like to watch the second half, as well as download the tablature and the MP3 jam track, you're going to want to go to activemelody.com and look for EP184. That's the lesson number for this lesson. So let's go ahead and get started with part one. All right, so as I mentioned in the intro, this is in the key of A. Uh, it is a one, four, five chord progression. There's three chords, uh, but those chords are all minor chords. So we're gonna have an A minor seven, a D minor seven, and an E minor seven. And I'll call, call these chords out as we get to them uh, and how I'm making them. But anyway, it starts with that A minor seven, easy chord to make. You just bar the fifth fret there, all six strings. And then I take my ring finger, go to the seventh fret, fifth string play all six strings. That's an A minor 7 chord. And so that's what I'm doing with my fretting hand. With the right hand I start with hitting just the sixth string, just the bass note, and then I go, I come up here and what I'm doing, I'm trying to hit strings uh, 1, 2, and 3. I think that's what I put in the tab. However, it's okay if you only hit strings 2 and 3. It's actually okay if you only hit strings 1 and 2. Um, but what you're doing is you're just starting to establish a rhythm. By doing that and so it's a little bright burst of a note and what what keeps it from ringing out is my left hand I go ahead and release the tension here I keep my finger in position keep my fingers in position but I release the tension so you go. so watch the left hand you can see the tension come off and that's what truncates that that note all right so that's the first thing we're gonna do now after that I played so let's look at that um, this first part, um, what I'm doing in my head is I'm thinking minor pentatonic scale. So the minor pentatonic scale, pattern one, is right here in position, right where our hands are. And I cover all the, the pentatonics in the uh, blues lead course at Active Melody. But this, this little bit in particular is something that I think this will be a takeaway that, uh, that you'll walk away with from this lesson from a rhythm perspective. It's actually also good for lead. but. What I do for this is I bar the first three strings here on the fifth fret. Now I always tie this back to the chord shape. Think of that A minor seven chord and think of what, what I'm about to show you and just look at how it kind of relates to that chord. So you could transpose it and play it in any key. That's why you do that. Okay, so we bar the first three strings here on the fifth fret and I'm going to play strings two and three. And then I hammer on to the seventh fret. Uh, third string. Now you can see what I've done. Those notes are right out of that pentatonic scale pattern one. So that's why they work against this chord. And that's just a downstroke. Downstroke, down. All three of those are downstrokes with the right hand. Alright, so I mentioned there was a takeaway. Now I use this little Thing that I showed you all the time when I'm playing rhythm, especially if I'm playing a minor rhythm. So you, in fact, there's a song with by Sheryl Crow. I think that's where I got the idea or heard it, uh, and that's Peter Stroud playing that on guitar, I believe. But that's a. Uh, but you hear this little. It's a somewhere between rhythm and lead. It's a very little percussive thing to do. It's also it fits right into that minor chord. down to the fourth string and you got so now you can go you can start playing around with that just look at that and, 
and all the variations you can do. And if you're playing a lead, you can work those in to your lead as well. Okay, and it also works on strings uh, three and four. So now you've got more variables to play with. Play around, put that jam track on and just start noodling with that and you'll start to see how that works. It's pretty fun. Okay, so back to the beginning we have. Now I came up here and went. Now, uh, let me show you how to do it with the left hand and then I'll show you what I'm doing with the right hand. So with the left hand, I'm barring the first two strings on the third fret here and I'm doing a hammer on to the fifth fret second string playing that. Now if you're wondering what this is, how does this fit into the, the key of A and all that, uh, so we have our pentatonic patterns. There's five patterns that I go over in that course. Pattern one is here. Now pattern five is right behind pattern one because it goes one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, so it loops. So pattern, pattern five is right there and that's what I'm doing. I'm playing out of pattern five, which I don't do that often. So the takeaway on this would be, look at where your bar is. So it doesn't matter if you're playing a minor or a major, just look at where that bar is and then go two frets behind it and bar those first two strings and hammer onto that second string there. And what, what that's created is a little, kind of, again, it's somewhere between rhythm and lead. Now I got that from Robin Ford. You can, it sounds like a very Robin Ford thing to do. Um, you know, he's, he's really good at some of those twang blues jazz things. I'm not sure what you would call that, but um, it's somewhere in between those three to me. Uh, twang because he does it on a telly and that tone by uh, plucking with your fingers. Now let me show you that technique. So what I'm doing to get that real bright pop is I'm using my middle finger and my ring finger on my right hand. I'm holding the pick obviously with these two fingers, but I'm using these two and I'm pulling and it gives you a real nice snap when you do that. Now you don't have to do that. If hybrid picking is too weird for you, if you're kind of new to playing, you can just pick it. But it loses its uh, something, its soul or something to me when you pick that. It just sounds, it falls flat versus that real bright sound. So there it is with a pick. I don't know, maybe it's just, it's a minor, but more precise I guess. So that's what I'm doing with the right hand. That's how I'm plucking it. Now I take those same two fingers and then I come down and play this lick. And what I'm doing, I'm just plucking strings two and three again. Middle finger and ring finger on my right hand. Now look at where I'm at with my left hand here. I'm back in pattern one of the minor pentatonic scale for the key of A. I'm barring the first three strings in the seventh fret. Although I'm only plucking strings two and three. And what I do is I do a bend and release, and I'm bending, I'm pulling both strings. Now, if you've got an acoustic guitar, you can still do this, but it's going to be a lot more uh, work. It's going to hurt your finger. It depends on your string gauge, of course. But that's the effect. That's more of a Chuck Berry. Keith Richards does that. Um, so after the bend and release, I come down, now I'm going to switch over to my pick with my right hand. We're going to bar the first three strings on the fifth fret and play string two and three again. So we have. And then I take my ring finger and I go. I come down to the seventh fret, fourth string, fifth fret, fourth string, seventh fret, fifth string. And that's down, up, down with the right hand. So we have. And that's the timing of it. From here we have. So then I can take my hand off the fretboard and my index finger goes down on the 5th fret 6th string back down to that A note and that resets the loop. So now we're back to where we started. Pretty cool. In, in fact, by having my ring finger here on the 5th string 7th uh, fret and then putting this finger down. I have my A minor 7 chord again, so it just works right back into where we started. It's very convenient. Okay, let me back up and piece that together. I'll kind of go through it slowly. Now, just keep 
going through that. Just don't go any further. Just loop that. If you're not a premium member, you don't have the jam track, um, the, and, but you're still following along, set a metronome and just try and get that down at whatever tempo you can do. If it's too fast, if what I'm trying to do is too fast, slow it down to something that's even painfully slow, but you want to be accurate. That's the thing. You don't want to move on until you can start to be somewhat consistent with your accuracy. Okay, so the second time through I went... So a lot of this we've already covered. Um, the only difference is... That's the same. The only difference is the way that uh, I ended the lick is I went... So I did the bend and release, same thing here, but instead of going down like that, I just stayed there and gave it a little bit of vibrato by kind of pulling on the neck there, pulling on those strings. That's not easy to do, to create a vibrato on two strings at once. You don't have to do that. And actually, I've seen players, when they're doing that, use two fingers, if that's easier for you. To do it that way, you can you can have that as an option. And again, like just skip that vibrato if that's too hard. And it sounds fine even without. Um, okay, so at the end of that, then we go to the D minor seven. Now let me show you what I'm doing here. So I've got the bar is still on the fifth fret, so that's convenient. Instead of hitting the low sixth string, now we're hitting the low fifth string. My middle finger goes down on the 6th fret 2nd string and my ring finger goes down on the 7th fret 4th string. That's how I'm making that D minor 7. So once I hit it, then I'm going to hit the rest of the chord. And I think, I can't remember in the tab, I think I went ahead and put uh, strings 4, 3, 2, and 1 there. As far as the little burst that we're going to do. Same technique as before where we release the tension here uh, to, to truncate the sound. All right, so then the next thing that happens is this little hammer-on. So to do the hammer-on, I just take my middle finger, my ring finger off the fretboard, keeping the bar here on the fifth fret. I'm going to play strings four, three, and two. And I'm just going to hammer those two fingers back down to where they were. So I'm recreating that D minor seven chord. Okay? Really cool thing to do rhythmically. If you're playing a minor seven chord, like that, using that chord shape, that gives you uh, a variation on the chord. So no matter where you're at on the neck. I would use that kind of a technique just to kind of create a, a rhythmic element and to just keep it interesting instead of just jangling. And that happens to a lot of us when we're learning to play rhythm. We assume that you just make the chord and you kind of leave the chord. All right, so here's something you might want to try that would be fun. Uh, to take some of the information that I gave you earlier in this video, those little takeaways, and work those around this D minor uh, 7 chord shape. And here's what I mean by that. So uh, m remember the little, little uh, thing that I showed you over the A minor. There's also the Robin Ford lift. Then there's that Chuck Berry thing. What if you did those over uh, pattern one of the D minor. So in other words, even though we're playing our chord here, think in your mind, where would D minor seven be using this, this chord shape? It'd be up here, right? Same thing that we're doing over the A, but up here. So that uh, you can take all those licks now and apply them up here. There's the Robin Ford lick. There's the Chuck Berry thing. They all apply here. See how they tie off the chord shape? Now if you're playing rhythm, see how you can kind of start working in some, some rhythmic uh, lead things. I think that's important. Uh, you don't want to just memorize what I'm doing, but start breaking this stuff apart and going, ah, okay, now if I'm playing rhythm, I can start to really... start to piece it together. And all I did there is I just switched the scale to match the chord. Um, you know, a lot of times we're playing in the key of, but in, in that instance, just to demonstrate that, that's what I did. All right, so play with it. Okay, back to the D minor seven. 
Now, the next thing I did was I went... Now, you may be saying, well, where did that come from? Well, so what I did in my mind was I, I did not switch um, to match... I did not switch scales to match the chord, so I did not in my mind go to that D minor 7 scale. Instead, I just stayed in the key of A. So I'm back, I'm staying in minor pentatonic scale, really, pattern 1. So if you think of that minor pentatonic pattern 1, this is going between pattern 1 and there's pattern 2. This is that lick that's very common, you hear it in blues all the time. So that's where that lick comes from. And that's what I did, I slid up, I gave it some vibrato, both strings, and I came down two frets, and then that last thing I played was just there on the fifth fret, strings two and three. All right, so let's back up and play through just the D minor seven portion. Now we're back to the one chord, back to the A. And that part is exactly the same as the first two times. And then I went. That's how I concluded that. That's using the same technique. The timing is just a little different, but that's plucking again with my middle finger, my ring finger on the right hand, strings two and three. Bend and release. There's strings two and three on the fifth fret. Seventh fret, fourth string. Here's your D minor seven. Back to the A minor seven. Really cool, I love that. You can use that a lot too in things that you do. Now, this is where we go to the E minor seven. Down to the back down to the D minor seven, and then to, back to the one. So to the five, to the four, and to the one. Now let me walk through this from a timing perspective. Uh, first of all, what I'm playing here with my left hand is exactly the same chord shape as the D minor 7 that we were just playing. It's just up two frets. So there's your E minor 7. You can use all those same principles, little hammer-on techniques and everything that you've done for the D, you can apply that to the E if you want. Alright, so the way that we're going to count this is like this. One and two. So I'm picking the notes out of the chord. I'm playing the E minor 7 chord here. Now I'm, it's exactly the same chord shape as the D minor 7. We're just up two frets. And I'm starting on the fifth string. So if I'm counting out the strings, I'm going 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, strum, meaning all five. 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, strum, and then switch. Now to count this out, it would sound like this. 1 and 2. So you can see that the strum happens on the and of three. One and two and three and four and. So the and of four, I go ahead and switch, which means I switch just premature to the next measure. And you do that to keep it interesting. You don't want to, if I did it right on the beat, it would be. It'd be so like methodical. It almost sounds like a computer generated to me or something boring. There's something nice about getting to the chord right before you get to the measure, playing ahead of the beat. One and two and three and four and one and two. And that's so, so that's how you get to from the E minor seven to the D minor seven from a timing perspective. And you can see that in the tab. Now the next thing that I played was this little lick. And then we're right back to the one. Let me show you the notes from that lick and then I'll show you how to count it. So the, the notes are uh, I take my ring finger and I start on the 8th fret 3rd string, slide down to the 7th fret. Uh, in case you're wondering where we're at, this is pattern 1. This is that blue note, so when you hear people talk about the blue note, I'm starting on the blue note there. Sliding down to the 7th fret 3rd string, 5th uh, fret 3rd string, 7th fret 4th string, 5th fret 4th string. And then we resolve on the seventh fret for fourth string. So this is a little little box pattern. So those are the notes. Let's talk about counting it. So starting back at the E minor seven, I'll add the ands in there. So you got one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it comes in on the and of two 
of the next measure. Let me do that again. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And that's where you'd come in on that. So you can rewind that piece of the video or you can just look at the tab uh, and follow it that way. And then we're back to the one. And to conclude it, I want to back to this, this little strum here. There's that lick. And then this time I just played strings two and three on the fifth fret. And came, then I came down and played the E7 sharp nine. The Hendrix chord. Really cool chord. It just keeps it more interesting than just playing it. I could have just played an E7 chord. But adding that sharp nine in there, it almost sounds like mysterious, like, ooh, that's kind of throws you. So to make that chord, I've got my middle finger and my ring finger on the seventh fret, strings five and th three, and my index finger goes down the sixth fret, fourth string. That, that's just your E7 chord, right? And then I take my pinky and go down on the eighth fret, second string. That's what gives you that weird sound. And that is the end of part one and then we go into the second half where I go into more of a lead. More of like an Albert King style lead there. Um, Alright, let me back up and uh, I'll play, I guess I'll go ahead and play through the whole thing, uh, all of part one, uh, and then that'll end this video and then we'll see you in part two. So here we go.